To Surferoo Sports, Pete the Surferoo here. Got a very special guest with us today to present the boxing, Mr. Adam Hollio. He is the big man, the English cricketer, and of course, captain. Mate, pleasure to have you on the show. Fantastic to be here. Really excited about doing this. Um, some great fights down at, at Narang for us to watch tonight. So. Um genuinely excited to be here mate now before we start the fights all those viewers out there just wondering how did you get into boxing cricket come boxing the total opposites man yeah well it must seem strange to people who don't know me very well but uh, you know I started boxing when I was 12 years old and I've always had a love of the sport and uh, it's just something I really enjoy I love doing it and sometimes I wish I loved golf but unfortunately for me I love fighting it hurts a little bit more than golf so um, you can only do what you enjoy mate it's uh, kept you looking fit and mean and young and also mate uh, we had a bit of a sparring session the other day in the gym put that mouth guard in now I heard it was a little bit used the old mouth guard and it caused a bit of a sensation on your lip mate yeah well it was a bizarre one actually I was a new mouth guard it was a oh new it was a cheap okay. cheap, um, cheap one from the, the sports store so there's a lesson for everybody don't buy cheap stuff and when I put it in I put it in a bit too far I pushed down too hard and my teeth were through and I got a grazing uppercut it wasn't a big shot and the next minute um, my lip was bleeding I didn't really feel any pain um, and then I went to Steve and he said you've bitten the whole way through your lip I ended up having to have 23 stitches wow. so um, I look like I'm permanently sad at the moment because there's a big <laughs> bottom lip hanging out tough man now mate uh upcoming fights we're going to see you out there in the ring doing your stuff and also refereeing well refereeing nobody likes a referee no one likes an english cricketer <laughs> so i thought i'd really um put my um put it out there and become a referee just to make sure everyone really hates me so um really enjoyed doing the refereeing I had some corporate bouts obviously i'm not a fully qualified referee so um just gave it my best mate and uh, took all the flack from the crowd <laughs> mate can you give us a bit of a rundown on the fights tonight yeah, well, it's a fantastic card down here tonight at Narang. Um, we've got Zane Rapoki, uh, he's taking on Jimmy Ray. Um, unfortunately, Jimmy Ray uh, passed away in a um, tragic uh, Tiger Moth accident straight after this fight, so, um, you know, very sad there. That's a, that's a good fight, two tough young kids. We've got Scotty Bryson having his third or fourth one of these fights against uh, Tony Graham having his first fight. That's bound to be a good fight as well. We've got uh, a couple of the bigger boys here um, coming in. Uh, Sasha Jelacic versus Dean Bukowski. They're um, bound to have a go at each other. And then the, the fight that everyone's talking about, mate, this is uh, be an absolute beauty. Tim Mahoney uh, versus Chris Hodges. There's a bit of bad blood between these guys. Tim Mahoney's uh, uh, from the Tigers Rugby League Club, and Chris Hodges is an ex-Tigers player, but he went to play for Tugan, and there's a little bit of a history there, so that one is bound to be an absolute beauty. Big boys as well, 100 kilos plus, both of them, so that's one I'm really looking forward Can't to. Can't wait for that one. Oh, mate, it's going to be great. So then we can move on to the professionals. Um, then we've got Sebastian Singh, he's a Fijian boy who lives in Sydney. He's taking on Matt Casbolt. Um, both of them undefeated, so that's, that's bound to be a good fight as well. And then we've got Isaac Sasaki from Ghana. Uh, experienced campaigner taking on Paul Tapley who we talked about earlier there so um, that's, uh, that's our referee so he's uh, he's going to be that's a very good fight and then the main event uh, Rowan Murdoch who's favourite down here in Narang 
uh, loved by everyone down in the area, and he's uh, he's got he's 12 and one, and, and a fantastic prospect, ranked uh, number 15 in the world, taking on Les Piper. Now these guys have already fought once, and it was an absolute beauty fight of the year that was. So uh, we're expecting a great fight here. Les Piper's taken the the fight at the last minute after um, a pull out from from his uh, the, the opponent there. And um, a Joseph Kawajo was the guy who pulled out four days before. So Les Piper's taken the fight at the last minute. That's going to be an absolute beauty as well. Mate, it's, it's great to see team spirit, you know, guys coming in at the last moment to replace someone that was, you know, destined to come and, and um, didn't come. Uh, Les Piper, he's a great fighter. Well, mate, he's, uh, he's one of the guys, that, you know, he's a proper, proper fighter. He's three times Australian champion. He stepped up at the last minute. No one really wants to do that against a fighter of Rowan Murdoch's uh, calibre. But Les uh, really thinks he can he can do something there after their first fight. He took him 10 rounds, so this is going to be a real test for for Rowan. And and any time Les Piper gets in the ring, there's always action. Sounds good, mate. Well, we can't wait. Let's go down and meet Dave Eller, our MC. Introduce our first fighters. Let's go. <laughs> Sports and uh, we're ready with our first fight, mate. And we've got the man in the ring as referee. Got our two contestants ready to go. Yeah, I'm not quite. Uh, look, at, look at me there. I'm looking quite awkward. Not quite sure what's <laughs> going on. Having a little bit of a scratch. So uh, that's uh, yeah. I'm looking a little bit awkward. I'm not sure that's your normal referee attire, <laughs> mate. <laughs> mate, we're on the Gold Coast. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm actually saying here to these guys. I'm probably asking them. I've never done this before, and. Uh, you need to help me out, but these two guys. This is, of course, this is uh, Jimmy Ray fighting Zane Rapoki, and um, you know these two guys. I mean, you can see by their physiques they're fit, so this is going to be a good fight. Now, talking about corporate fights, mate. Um, it just the average guy down the road, um, business or whatever, and they just come down here to Steve's gym, train, and get into some boxing and maybe have some fights. Well, that's right. I mean, they're, they're a bit better than your average guy off the street. They've probably got a little bit of an athletic background already, but. Yep. Um, Steve won't just let people come in off the street and have a corporate fight straight away. They'll have to do a good six months training with him. So as, they, you know, as you can see, these you know these guys are, they're good. You know you can see they've got their hands up and yep. head movement. So they're not just your average mm -hmm. guy just having a go. They're a bit better than that. And you know, Jimmy Ray's um, pushing the action there. He's, uh, Zane's a little bit taller and Jimmy's coming uh, Jimmy's coming forward at him, looking to get underneath uh, Zane's jab there. Now, do you find a lot of these boxers do continue to go professional or, or, or amateur after this because they seem to like it? Well, they do. I mean, it's one of those things you don't really know how you're going to go until you uh, get in there. And uh, this is the only way to find out is by actually getting in and having a fight. And, and not a lot of them go on and turn professional, but the odd one who's really uh, excels can yep. go on and, and be pro. And uh, Jimmy Ray is probably um, somebody who, you know, had the right fitness and you can see how aggressive he is coming forward, pushing the fight, strong as well, just coming forward. So he had ability there and you know there's no doubt that um, he could have um, gone on and become professional. Mm. He, he was a about that. Yeah. And he's, um, you can see he's getting, he's moving his head nicely, avoiding Zane's jabs and getting underneath. The referee standing there looking like he's got no idea what's going on. <laughs> He needs to get out of the way, he's in the way of the action here. But uh, Jimmy really pushing the action, and Zane sort of a little bit finding it difficult to cope with the different punches that Jimmy's um, throwing at him. The right hand, good right hand there from Jimmy. Now, rounds wise, we're only going three rounds for these guys? Yeah, three two minute rounds, which I mean, we say only, but you can get in there and you even try and do one round. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a hard one. Hard one. End of the first round there. That's definitely a Jimmy Ray's round, I would say. So, um, 
you know, it'll be interesting to see if he can maintain that yep. that speed that he came out at. He's come out very hard and, and Zane's a little bit lost for ideas there. I think Jimmy's thrown a lot of different punches at him and confused him a little bit. Yeah. Now what would be going on in the corners there, mate? Just psyching him up and tell him which punches to hit and... Well that's uh, his corner man's there, Shane Wood, he's a professional boxer himself and yep. experienced fighter. Um, he, he'll be giving him advice. He, actually, I fought Shane, wouldn't he beat me? So he Ooh. must he must be pretty good, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he must be, eh? Yeah. So um, he's uh, yeah, he would have um, been trying to give Zane a bit of a panic. It looks like he's told him he's got to come back with some punches because Jimmy Ray's just walking him down at the moment, coming forward at him, and the referee needs to get involved and stop that going on. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, no, but definitely is a good fight for, for our first card. Yeah, no, it's um, a yeah, tremendous fight. And this, the quality of the boxing is, you know, something that you, you definitely see in an amateur bout at least. And, you know, maybe even as good as some professionals. So um, definitely high, high quality of boxing. A lot of skill on show. Three two-minute rounds is like a lifetime when you're out there. So, um you know, these guys will have been training and they've, they've done, you know, trained five, six rounds and then when they get in there it all goes out the window. So uh, nerves and tension make it uh, difficult for these guys to, after the first round they'll be like, I'm not going to make it three rounds. That's what it feels like. Wow. So, uh, Mate, um, what's the first signs of, of, of a guy getting a bit, um, you know, loss of energy? Do those gloves drop down first, do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's a number of signs. Yeah, gloves can drop down, um, punches can get a little bit slower, and obviously lack of power. Mm -hmm. uh, the reactions get a bit slower. Mouth starts hanging open, mate. Tongue okay. coming out. <laughs> Eyes. So, yeah, Jimmy pleading with the referee to get this fight under control. It's actually quite interesting watching um, watching this. You don't realise just how bad you are as a referee until mate, you're you... you've done well. You've done well, mate. You've done well. <laughs> But, um, but these these guys are pretty quick, so they're um, making it um, difficult for me. But Jimmy Ray is looking very strong here, and he's a bit much for Zane here. Another round another, gone. Another round to Jimmy Ray, I'd say. And um, probably, I'd say, uh, Shane saying, look, you're going to need to stop him here. You need to knock out to win this fight, because obviously it's um, Jimmy Ray's taking his first two rounds. He's just coming forward. Not giving Zane any time, pressuring him the whole time, throwing lots of punches, so um, doing everything that Steve's obviously taught him to do and yep. advised him to do going into the fight. And you can see he's not even tired, he's ready to go out there well before the bell rings for the third round. Number three and the last one, and he's straight into it, old Jimmy. Yeah. Zane coming back with a few punches of his own though. And I think obviously Jimmy's thrown a hell of a lot more punches in those first two rounds. But, um, he's just a little pit bull and he just wants to keep coming forward. <laughs> and he's a good kid around the gym as well, you know, just a happy guy, always. Um, always got a smile on his face, always happy to talk to people, so it was a tragedy when we, um, when we lost him down in, the, in that uh, Tiger Moth accident, so terrible. You can see the boys starting to get a little bit tired now, holding on. But, I mean, they've done really well. Three rounds, three twos, and they're still throwing punches. And at this stage, uh, the heavyweights are usually just having a hug by the stage, okay. just trying to, <laughs> trying to get a rest. This is the Jimmy's. And another thing that you can sort of tell when someone's getting tired is their head usually tends to stop. A couple of good shots there from Zane. The heads usually stop moving around, but Jimmy Ray's head moving nicely throughout the whole fight. And even though we're coming towards the end of the third round, he's still moving. Still gunning it. Yeah. And Zane's looking like he's starting to get a little bit tired as well now. Ticking away, I think we're getting pretty close to the end of the rounds, and um, I think old Jimmy Ray's wrapped this one up. Yeah, I think he's um, so he's pretty much looks like he's 
and you know, barring a catastrophe here, he's won every single round. So. Zane's had probably got better as the fight's gone on, but there we go. Jimmy's just been a little bit more active. I think they're both glad that's over. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good round of fights there, mate. Yeah, no, it was uh, three good rounds. Uh, obviously, I'm um, not an expert in judging, but I'd say that's a, a comfortable victory for Jimmy Ray. But Zane's put on a good performance there for his first corporate bout, and I'm sure he'll have a good future if he decides to do some more. Mate, let's go down to the ring and see what Mr. Dave Eller, our MC, has got to say. Hey, welcome to the Battle of the Old Boys. Myself and Tony will be there leading the old folks in, in charge, making a good go for everyone. Looking forward to a great bout. Hey Pete, how you going? Feeling good mate? We're to go, we're in to knock it out, mad dog, hard.
Okay guys and welcome back to Surfaru Sports uh, and we're into our second fight here, mate. Straight, and, into, uh, it. Straight into it, look at Tony Graham go here, he's all over uh, Scotty Bryson, he's literally just like a windmill, he's throwing punch after punch, poor Scotty Bryson just can't even come up for air, <laughs> straight back into him, unbelievable, you think there's no way that Tony can maintain this. Well, these guys are a lot older too, you know, and uh, they're sort of giving more punches than our young ones. That's right, yeah, I mean, like, exactly right. Scotty's, um, this is his third or fourth fight, but he's, um, he's a little bit older. He's 140 kilos and he's, wow. he's um, gone on a diet and really uh, got himself in great shape. A little bit older, like you said, but what a tremendous uh, story it is. And Tony Graham, this is his first fight. And, He's um, put an eight count on him now, so he's obviously landed a good shot. Ooh, some hard punches yeah, there. Good shots. He's coming back, Scotty Bryce. He's got a big heart. And these guys have both trained down the Matrix Gym and um, they're just two good characters. Scotty Bryce, I'm like, loved by everybody. He's a gentleman. Um, just inspirational with losing his weight and what he's done and getting in there and doing these fights and a lot of the uh, people down here albeit he's older he's never going to be a, a world champion but he just gets in yeah. and has a go and everybody uh, really respects him and looks up to him as an individual it's good to see guys getting out there and, and having a go not sitting at home in front of the tv and picking out that's getting right. the fitness mate that's what it's all about absolutely you know we've scotty bryce and everybody respects him and tony graham he's a new zealander Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, he's a, you know, it's a great round there by Tony. His first fight, he's, he must have thrown 200 punches in that round, mate. <laughs> yeah. He's just like coming out like a woman. Scotty's going to try and answer that, mate. If I remember, it's, uh, Scotty had a broken nose going into his fight, so that's why he's got that. But, um, wow. Well, he didn't want to cancel, so tough guy. He's come out with that big gear which protects his nose and his but Mate, I wouldn't be in there with a broken nose. No, not the place to be Round with a broken nose. Round two. Tony's obviously decided that he can come out so hard in the first round, he needs to... Maybe not. He's, he's gone he's for it. He's going for it. <laughs> no rest for him. No. He means business, mate. He does. Serious business. Oh, Whoa. good shots. Great shot too. Apparently for his training back in New Zealand, he used to carry sheets up and down the side of the uh, hill. So you know, a good, past, <laughs> good pastime for those, um, those Kiwis. They just... Yeah, they do crazy and weird things. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, he used to carry it up to his house, um, to his bedroom, I think. But... <laughs> we'll keep it G-rated. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the referee puts his hand in there, mate. Yeah, I'm not, not quite sure what I was saying. Scotty Bryson, you can see, like he's taken the hammering in that first round, and he's just come back strong. It's, it's literally like a modern-day Rocky movie, mm. this mate. So as I've said before, you know, the time they start to get tired, a bit of hugging goes on. And, um, these boys can tell they started to get tired. They're, albeit they're both fit guys for their age, so just um, brutal pace they've set. Now there's a, a crowd build up already at, at the centre here for a big major fight tonight. That's right, yeah. I mean, everybody is a bit, um, a bit of excitement in the, in the air and the crowd building out. Obviously, there's um, plenty more people to come for that main event. Brian Murdoch and Les Piper, but a good shot there by Tony. And, yeah. um, he's, he's rocked um, Scotty a few times there. Scotty keeps coming back, though. He's like, like a pit bull. He just won't give up. I'm sure he'll be hoping that Tony runs out of gas and he can come over the top of him in the third round. So, um, another round down. Another round down, and you'd have to say that's a uh, round to Tony again. So, um, getting good advice there from Shane Wood. Mate, in the ring, when you're sort of hammering it out and you know, like you feel all that the muscles starting to go and all that, what, what sort of keeps you going? Is it, is it, is 
just the, the full on just uh, mind just keeps you going and the muscles are letting go or what? Because well, the, the other option, you know, isn't, isn't a good one, mate. So you've yeah. got to keep going. You've got a bloke there who's trying to punch you in the face. So you, yeah. you kind of, you kept going by the fact that you've got to defend yourself. And Round three. Obviously all your training. You've got to have done the training. You know, draw on all that training and know that Scotty Price is coming out hard. Obviously he knows he's got to win this round. And Tony's not taking it back with Snip either though. These two kind of warriors, absolute warriors. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Just these guys just having a go at each other. In stark contrast to the referee standing there looking like a complete <laughs> buffoon. Got no idea what he's doing. But he's just having a rest <laughs> yeah. before his big fight, <laughs> eh? <Yeah. laughs> I don't think anybody told him about the dress code either. Just rocked up in a pair of jeans. And... <laughs> oh, some good solid punches there. They're both um, absorbing those punches. No one's going down. That's it. They're just like two blokes in a pub. They're just uh, swinging hard. They're obviously, all their technique they've done. They're tired. You know, that technique goes out the window and it all becomes heart. And both of these guys have got huge hearts. They're just going to fight all the way to the end. When they look back at the video, they'll they'll say, "Wow, all that technique we did!" It's, once you get into those last few rounds, yeah. it, it goes out the window, and you're just fighting with survival and instinct. Uh, you know, this is fantastic. With guys this age, it's just, uh, it's most of them are quite happy sitting there in their armchair, doing some knitting, mate, or <laughs> playing cards. Get out there and do what they're doing. With inspiration. Oh, we're totally going to the end. Tony's got his, um, his kids down here, um, referee in the way again, get out of the way, hold it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Tony had his, his kids there and they're all ringside, so, uh, you know, good family occasion for them. It's fantastic, you know, boxing, you know, always see the fighters at the end of the fight, give each other a big hug and cut from this time. Wow. <laughs> yes, I think there's no more energy left for them. No, I don't think there's enough energy for hugging, they've just left it all in the ring. Fantastic. Mate, that was great. I'd say Tony's uh, might have nicked the decision there, but definitely a close fight and tremendous effort by Scotty Bryson. Always, um, always inspirational. Well, mate, let's go back down to the ring and see what Mr. Dave Ellis has got to say and see who won this fight.